はい、それでは、えー、午後の。We would now like to start the afternoon session.Those of you online, welcome back.Allow me to introduce myself again.I'm serving as your MC today.I am Watanabe of Monfa International Exchanges Division. Thank you very much for the online participants tuning in despite the time difference. It is now 1 30 p.m. Japan time, and we would now like to start the afternoon session. The first theme of the afternoon session is the publicity activities of international study program. Argentinian and Brazilian presenters will present to be responded by their fellow participants, respectively. After the two presentations, we will entertain questions from the floor and online. Christian from Argentina, working together with the local government, is the theme of his presentation. Hello, everyone. I'm the president of Alumni Association, a mixed scholarship program in Argentina. And first of all, I would like to express my appreciation for MOFA for their invitation to this event. Allow me to introduce you with the activities at the Alumni Association in Argen Argentina. First, this Alumni Association has six senior members, including them, there are 500 18 registered members. However, the number of active participants who join the activities on a regular basis is only around 50. And our challenge is to expand this group of active participants. The challenges we face may be similar to many of the challenges faced by other associations. One is to better develop networks among Former scholarship students. Second is to carry out events to introduce Japan. And thirdly, is to provide support for those wishing to study in Japan. And fourthly, to provide support for returned students find, trying to find jobs. Now, what activities do we do in Argentina? Major activities include study in Japan information sessions, lecture series, and networking receptions. We also use social network accounts to expand the publicity and to provide orientation for new international students going to Japan. We also provide follow up services to return students. Now, let me introduce you. About the regional information sessions. From 2017 to 2022, we, including Buenos Aires, the capital of the city, made a tour of 24 states, providing 91 regional information sessions for study in Japan program. Altogether, we have received 9,500 participants. Who received Japan related information on this occasion. In addition to that, we worked closely with municipal organizations to hold the regional information sessions. Regional o r g a n i z a t i o n for example, would include Japanese Embassy, who earmarks part of their budget to provide support for these activities. In addition, the regional Governments and municipal organizations who also help us build a information center. In addition to the educational organization who provides the news, in addition to other Japan affiliated organizations, we also have been working to further enhance the information, disseminating information on Japan. And that is another important goal of regional information session. By holding these events, we have been able to achieve the following outcomes. 
what have we been able to achieve by working closely with regional organizations? We have been able to raise the level of awareness about Japan through close working with the regional organizations we have been able to establish our information sending capacity we have also been able to enhance human network as well working closely with japanese organizations and educational organizations we have been able to achieve certain outcomes as well with the japan societies we work closely to more widely disseminate information about Japan. Exchanges and interactions with regional education organization has also been promoted. By holding information sessions, regional Japanese organizations as well as education organizations have been able to locate students who have returned from Japan. By doing so, new activities have been launched and networks have been widened. Working closely with regional media, we have also been able to widen the scope of publicity. The news has been covered by national newspapers and regional newspapers as well. And this has worked quite positively to raise the level of awareness about the information of study in Japan opportunities. Overall, I would say that the better communication and coordination has been able to establish Jap presence of Japan and impact of study in Japan programs have also been widely disseminated in non-capital areas across the country study in Japan opportunities have been effectively communicated leading to the collection of outstanding candidates to these programs alumni associations are carrying out a range of different activities in their countries I believe that working with regional organizations can be a very effective channel as well. With this, I would like to close my presentation. Thank you, Christian. From Bangladesh, Koshi san will make some response. through your alumni association to your country people definitely it is uh, uh, very much important and most problem is to getting the uh, volunteers so i am so happy that your organization uh, doing well the regularly 50 person 50 uh, alumni are doing these activities and disseminating from uh, capital to the root level and communicate with the some various organizations like Japanese embassy, local public and private universities, and or different local organizations, and also use the media like newspaper, local and uh, national newspaper. It is very, very much informative for the students. Usually, uh, the students who are living in capital, they get the all, all information. Sometimes it is very difficult for the remote university, remote areas, but you are doing well and it may be an example for us also we can progress in this way how we can uh, improve in our, in our countries to you know give the information to the students who are wish to and willing to uh, pursue their higher education in japan thank you very much thank you very much for your comment <laughs> thank you So moving on to the next presentation, which will come from Paula-san from Brazil. Uh, she will be talking about cooperation among alumni associations in Brazil. So Paula-san, please, the floor is yours.
はじめまして、三島。Thank you very much. I am Paula Mishima. And I come from the AMBEJ, Northeastern Association of Brazilian Former Scholarships and Trainees in Japan. And thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to take part. I'm sorry, I'll be speaking English. And I will be talking about cooperation among alumni associations in Brazil. Brazil is a, uh, has a huge territory, so we have 10 alumni associations, some only for JICA and some only for MEX. Ambej covers all the Japanese scholarship alumni and always count on the local consulate support. We have close relations with the Nihonjin Kai and with public universities and institutes. Several members of Ambej teach or research there. Uh, I learned that most strategies for promoting scholarships are similar around the world, but I highlight that exposure of alumni and their reached milestones are important for effective engagement and visibility. Uh, as promoting activities uh, demand intensively time and manpower, and all of us are volunteers, the task becomes more manageable if we count on partner associations. So, for example, in digital medium promoting each other's material and, even, uh, and events broadens the reach with the same volume of material generated by each association itself. And sharing on-site events might reduce the manpower required in the same manner and enhance the networks. Besides that, Exchanging hints for different approaches facilitate continuous improvement, that's Kaizen. The strength of our network should be kept to make all happen. So we have this meeting at the capital of uh, our country, Brasilia, where we count on the kind support from the Embassy of Japan. Uh, there we exchange follow-ups and plan the next actions uh, to support new candidates through the already mentioned activities, which is the current status. And I think that the next step could be extending the collaborations and realizing joint workshops about complementary subjects such as daily life hints and importance of joining alumni associations upon conclusions of their scholarships. Uh, for which we would like to stress that we appreciate the support received from our Consulate General and would like to be able to receive more as we expand our activities. Paula-san, thank you very much for the presentation. And now from New Zealand, we have Paul-san for some comments. At how many uh, chapters do you have of the uh, of in, in Brazil is coming from New Zealand? Obviously, a very big country, so uh, that was um, that very interesting. Um, in relation to your uh, promotional strategies, I also thought they were uh, very helpful. The examples there and would be useful in New Zealand. Um, I, I keep coming to this idea uh, here that I've been hearing a lot of visiting schools. And uh, and I think um, that's a real learning that uh, that that, that I, I'm going to take away and back to New Zealand. So that's been very helpful. Um, also around cultural events um, in New Zealand, we have what they call uh, Japan Day in Auckland, where we have a an event where um, uh, twenty ten or twenty thousand people come to a, a, a day event where. Um, organized by uh, the Japanese society with help from the Consul General. It's a fantastic event and there's lots of opportunity to share um, and learn about Japanese culture. Uh, and in that, um, I think we should probably follow your lead and do it, take more, our group, the, uh, the uh, Mixed Alumni Association should take more of an effort in trying to get involved with that. So that's a very helpful learning. Um, <clears throat> on, in relation to uh, collaboration, I, I agree uh, very much with, with what you're doing and building the stronger ties between your members. 
um, both uh, sort of within within the country and I think what we're trying to do here on a regional basis. So in New Zealand, I could take that away and try and work with uh, the other two branches or chapters we have in New Zealand um, and also um, externally um, uh, with um, countries like uh, Australia and, and, and Papua New Guinea here, our friends here. Um, so, look, I think it's been really interesting and it's, it's given me some new ideas and reinforced um, some good learnings. I, I don't have any specific questions for you, but I think that the, uh, uh, the uh, Chiiki Betsu session that we have this afternoon, I think some of the ideas you've talked about will be very good for us to, uh, to, to bring up in the meeting. So, thank you very much. <laughs> <coughs> Paula, Paul, thank you very much. We'd now like to entertain some questions. We have received some online questions already. One moment. From Mexico, Francisco Valencia has a question to Brazilian participants in English. What are the challenges and benefits of having an association that integrates all type of former scholars such as Mex and JICA. What's the rational, rational uh, behind that integration since in Mexico we are separated? Uh, I don't think that uh, in the foundation of UNBEJ we had this kind of uh, thought like is is it worth it to make it separated or or together it just happened to be together uh, but uh, since we are uh, all I, I think that this is a problem that's common for most of the the associations here that we lack manpower right so I think that uh, collaboration is very important and uh, the tendency is to gather all the associations. Of course, there are the cases, the local cases, where, uh, as our colleague uh, Ashok San, uh, said, uh, they have the, the information has to be translated into each reality, even in the same country. Uh, so it's healthy to have it separated, but it's unhealthy or unpractical, uh, unpractice. Um, to to make it separated and without communicating so if you join uh, you can make bigger events and reach a uh, broader uh, radius thank you very much so now we'd like to take up questions uh, here from the floor um, if you have any questions please uh, put up your name card yes Damira-san from Uzbekistan, please. I have a question to Christian-san. In your presentation, you talked about providing orientation to the, um, the students um, in Uzbekistan also uh, for students who are willing to go uh, to Japan. We do have some orientation sessions. So, how do you arrange these orientations? Because coming to Japan, of course, um, the theme is quite broad. So uh, what themes do you focus on when you provide these orientations? So thank you for the question. Well, first, uh, the orientations that we provide is done inside the embassy or within the embassy. And during these sessions, we provide information about basic manners to be followed here in Japan. And also building up relationship with your instructors or teachers about the senpai, kohai relationship. And um, about daily life in Japan, uh, we provide guidance on that as well. And for 
Uh, those who do not speak Japanese at all, uh, we provide some lessons on basic Japanese. So that's what we do. Uh, thank you very much. So basic Japanese, um, do you provide courses? Yes, and that's done in the embassy. I'm at the, actually at the cultural center. Ah, yes, understood. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Yes, please. Thank you everyone for your presentation. Thank you, Paula and Christian. I would like to ask Christian, because as you already received as a comment that I think majority of the associations, we struggle to have members who are actively participating, right? And in Argentina, it seems like, the, I mean, it's not everyone, but you have a considerate amount of people who are actively participating in the association. So I would like to ask if you could share with us like, what might be the reasons, like, do you have a strategy? Are there some, mm. let's say, uh, yeah, like, policies or it might also have to be with certain characteristics of the students because I think during our like, different exchanges of opinions that we had yesterday, we were mentioning that it seems like in Argentina, for example, it seems like the interest for Japanese language is higher than in other Latin American countries, for example, or even probably the interest in the Japanese culture in general. So yeah, that is my question. Thank you. Okay. Um, what can I say? Uh, first of all, uh, these Chihou Ryugak Setsumei Kai uh, are very interesting. It's a very interesting event for our former scholars uh, because they got the, the opportunity first to travel uh, and to actually being able to interact with other students that are willing to travel to Japan. So they kind of feel important and, and they got some recognition also for doing this. So it's like a win-win uh, activity. Um, especially what we do is try to um, try to know who is in, in each one of the provinces and we contact them and maybe they are far away so they are not related uh, with our, our with our um, activities but in this opportunity we are going to his or her province so we contact them and we tell them that we are willing to do this activity and and they feel that going to the university and being able also to speak to local government or local university they are it's a, an opportunity for them to get recognition and, and maybe get also possible um, possibilities for jobs or whatever so they are really interested in participate in this kind of uh, activities um, and then it's an opportunity also for us uh, to get more members because maybe we and didn't know this person was there, but now we know, so we uh, incorporate them in our WhatsApp uh, group and we start to share with them the information so they are again um, engaged with Japan because maybe they weren't engaged because they were far away. Uh, so this was a way to uh, get more members and make them more active. Uh, thank you for your question. Thank you very much. And there's a question here um, coming in online. I would like to read it out. And this question is from Sri Lanka, from Sarif San. It's in English. And it's not addressed to any one country, uh, but uh, he wants an answer from anybody who is carrying out this activity. The Japan alumni in Sri Lanka have initiated efforts to have a TV program on Japanese language and also promoting the SSW 
among our countrymen or, and women. In the, in the way, we can help both Japan and our own country. Would anybody like uh, to answer this question or any comments, opinions about the question? So, uh, from Bangladesh, Korshed san, please. Thank you very much. Yes, it's, it's a good initiative. If we go through uh, television and so the other media, it will be easy. We can, the, like uh, Gordio san, who go to the some places where communication is good. But in the remote area, the students who are willing to, to know how to pursue their study, higher study, they can watch TV, TV program um, and other media program. So they, it will be helpful for the all peoples, all students, how, what the lifestyle education system is in this of Japan is very much good initiative. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, please. Uh, in, in my country, in uh, Papua New Guinea, through JICA, we do have the EQTV, and hence the quality education through TV. It's a Japanese uh, JICA sponsored program where we offer grade 9, 10, 11, and 12 courses online on the TV in normal Japanese uh, English courses, maths and science. So, on the same token, if we can offer you know, normal, you know, Japanese language over the TV. Yeah, that, that's also okay, good, it can be done. But again, it comes to the sponsorship, who will sponsor the program on the TV. So somebody has to take ownership of it. Yes. We're willing to do, as uh, members of uh, the Alumni Association or so, so forth, yes, we're willing to assist, but uh, at the end of the day, things have their own costs and so if you know uh, some sponsors can be available yes, that can be done just like what we are doing the education teaching of maths and science on the tv program is sponsored by the education department of the country so likewise can be done in japanese like what the, the uh, over in sri lanka they're trying to do yes thank you Hi. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, Paula-san, please. Uh, uh, Christian-san, uh, thank you for your presentation. And uh, I would like to ask uh, this, this um, issue about uh, reaching uh, further areas in Argentina is very important and very interesting as well. I, I, I'm trying to find out how can we do this in my region. Um, I would like to know with which budget or how do you manage to go there? Uh, I, I believe it's on-site work, isn't it? So how do you manage to go there? Which budget, which support do you have, please? Well, it's important to ask the Embassy of Japan. They have a, a program called Jinko Teki, Jinteki Koryu Hashin, Taigai Hashin. Program. And so you, ha you have to ask to, for help to the embassy. So maybe they can arrange some budget uh, for these kind of activities. And of course, it's up to, to you, to the association, to try to use it the best way you can um, for uh, trying to do the most possible quantity of uh, sessions but definitely you gotta ask to the embassy of japan in your country thank you very much thank you everyone
Natalia. Thank you. I have a question to Paula from Brazil. In Brazil, well, Brazil is a large country. Organizing an event, you need to promote dissemination of information. How do you promote publicity to cover the entire nation, which is large in size? Is it email or Facebook or what tools do you use to disseminate the information of the event? So we have the local work. So each association of each area does its own work. And what we have is to share the materials and information and so on. I, I don't know if I could. Uh, but uh, how do you share this information? Uh, using uh, through email, uh, uh, through uh, some private pages. What, what is the technical? I mean, the technical tool you use to to spread the information. Yes, uh, different from uh, some countries that I have noticed. Uh, Facebook is already over <laughs> in Brazil, so uh, we use uh, WhatsApp and Instagram. Uh, Instagram is very strong there in Brazil. So Instagram is, uh, I think that's the, the main. Uh, also, we have the mailing. That's very interesting because uh, uh, I would have never thought of Instagram, actually. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, could give us an idea. Thank you. Thank you very much. So then we now would like to move on to the next theme. Uh, which is some characteristic activities and issues in each country. And we will have five countries uh, to make presentations. Uh, first, uh, we will have three countries uh, to make presentations. Uh, the first three countries is United States, Bangladesh, and Mexico. And after each presentation, we will ask uh, comments from the Solomon Islands, Australia, Papua New Guinea, and Colombia. And at the end, we will have a Q&A session. From John from the US is making a presentation of use of SNS to promote interactions among the alumni. Hello, everyone. Having making a presentation after lunch is a challenge. I hope you're doing OK. As it was with the Tokyo Marathon on Sunday, there are five more presentations. Allow me to speak in Japanese today. I am from the United States. My name is John McCraflin. I became a recipient of the scholarship when I studied administrative studies at ICU in 1993 to 4. I lived in Japan for 13 years studying and working. I'm currently working for the Department of Education of the U.S. And Japan-related activities is outside the scope of my works. So I would first like to express my appreciation for the kind invitation by MOFA. The theme of my presentation today is the promotion of alumni interactions through SNS. Zoom and social network have been developed by companies in the US, so we are in that sense an advanced country in this field. But we are, in other aspects, a developing country, especially when it comes to the Alumni Association because it was launched last year. But JET program alumni amounts to 35,000 in the US, and they do also have a stronger network today. As one of the alumni of the GOJ sponsored scholarship, I was able to meet the ambassador to create a network of alumni who studied in Japan in the past. Three years after returning to the US, I also have 
volunteered as interviewers of those applying to the Japan Scholarship Program. And I need to change the pages of my slide. Let me touch up before discussing the newly launched LinkedIn group. Let me introduce what we have been doing. There are 18 diplomatic missions of Japan across the US. Each mission promotes interactions with alumni who studied in Japan. However, there is only one organization of alumni association named Amanogawa, located in the northwestern part of the country. Now, let me introduce the LinkedIn group of the alumni in the US. There are three goals of this LinkedIn group. This is there needs to be a correction. It is not the US sponsored scholarship. It is GOJ sponsored scholarship program. Incumbent and former students who studied in Japan needs to be networked and their networking needs to be promoted. We also have to keep disseminating related information, organizing events and information sessions. These are the goals of our LinkedIn group. When we launched this new LinkedIn account in May 2023, left bottom you can see two numbers. First, then we currently have 51 members of this LinkedIn group. This number also includes alumni and incumbent international students studying in Japan. Over 11. 120 comments or viewers or followers exist for this channel as well. Next slide, you can see the events that have been organized to promote the networking of the alumni. As mentioned already, in February 2023, I have been able to meet the Japanese ambassador along with my fellow alumni. At this round table, we discuss the active use of social network channel to bring put together a group of alumni. At this meeting, and, and based on this decision, the LinkedIn account was launched in May 2023. Idea also has inspired an event barbecue event of alumni, Jet and Mansfield Fellow and other Japan-related scholars organized in September 2023. And this was the dinner organized at the time of the launches. And on the right is a picture of the barbecue event in September. Now the status quo and the challenges we face. Alumni of state-sponsored scholarship started posting news and articles, revitalizing the use of the social network channel, further promoting additional interactive sessions. On the left is the post that I posted. At the center is the picture of incumbent students studying in Japan. This is the 21st century style of study in Japan. And on the right is the student's account or the posting who is now studying in Kobe, Japan. We intend to further expand the scope of our activities, working closely with the embassies and consulates general thereby revitalizing the use of this LinkedIn group account. Before closing, I would also like to touch it up on the following things. How to engage fellow alumni. Well, I have experiences in the US, the UK and Japan, and based on my personal 
experiences. I would like to touch, discuss about my experience later. People to people networking is very important for fundraising and there should be many more ideas. Thank you very much for your close attention. Thank you, John. Lyndon from Solomon would respond to the presentation. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. John, for your nice presentation about your association in the United States. Um, uh, I just want to make a uh, comment as well, uh, part of the discussion. Um, for me, uh, from Solomon Islands, I think we have learned a lot as well uh, from your group. Um, we haven't think about using the linked. Um, I have a linked as well, but I have, I, we don't go to that stage that we use linked. Um, also, there are a lot of uh, differences we can also Solomon Islands can learn from the United States, given the fact that uh, from yesterday's presentation, um, like. Uh, Japan Foundation has a lot of, uh, I think, two um, two headquarters in in the states, where you are very fortunate. Uh, and um, uh, please continue to uh, promote Japan in US. Um, given the fact that for us in Solomon Islands, um, we don't have those uh, opportunities that we don't uh, that you enjoy. Uh, the other thing that I also want to comment as well is that you have the students coming over to Japan to, to study. Um, for Solomon Islands, we don't have those opportunities yet, like partner between universities and uni universities in Japan and in Solomon Islands. Uh, we are still in the process of uh, trying to go to that stage at the moment. Uh, we are working with the Japanese ambassador in Solomon Islands. Um, the other thing that um, I also learned from the United States is that um, what is it? The the, the picture. Uh, it was quite um, what is it? Uh, uh, catching for me as well. Uh, um, the students. Ah. The stu this one. Yeah, they're very happy. Um, mm. I think that's um, for me. Uh, that's how we should. Uh, what is it? Uh, uh, interact. Um, express ourselves. We 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 need to learn from others. And then express ourselves in a in a manner that is uh, uh, how how would I put it uh, free to express it. Um, that is one thing I also learned as well. Um, having said that, you are much more better um, compared to what we experience. Um, can you explain to me some of the the challenges, um, despite all the assistance you or uh, what is it all the opportunities you have what are some of the challenges that you want to inform me so that i can also learn uh from the perspective of the united states thank you ah, okay <laughs> thank you for your comments and your question uh as you were talking and mentioned you have a linkedin account also i was uh, realizing one thing i didn't say here that is a nice advantage of linkedin over other uh, social media is um, I'm often contacted for jobs. So people look at my profile and they think you'd be a good candidate for this kind of job. And I'm not even looking, right? It's just kind of interesting to see. And so this may also be uh, of benefit to students in other countries. I don't know if scouting and recruiting happens the same in other countries as it does in the United States. Uh, Americans change jobs quite a bit. Uh, but um, I think that could be a side benefit to this approach. It's also a, a little more professional than Facebook or Instagram, uh, so it's intended to be. And um, but this alone is not a solution. You, you people have to meet in person in real events in cities and places to to strengthen the network. So um, this can get us started, I think. Thank you very much. The next presentation will come from Korshed San from Bangladesh. The theme is dissemination of Japanese culture and language. So Korshed San, please.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Korsed Arom, and I studied in Tohoku University, and I am the head of my own uh, medical school. And my Japanese is not that good. I'm very uh, shy. It takes time to, for me to speak in Japanese, so I'd like to switch over to English. Japanese University Alumni Association in Bangladesh, JOA was established in 2000 under the patronage of Embassy of Japan in Bangladesh. Present member is more than 1000. Main mission is to promote friendship between Bangladesh and Japan by organizing different national socio-cultural events of the two countries. Conduct education seminar in different universities focusing on education system and facilities in Japan and social custom and culture. And the mixed orientation program is conducted by job. So here you see the picture, the right upper picture is the present and outgoing EC members with His Excellency uh, Ambassador of Japan. And then next right down, is the uh, it is the um, events of the dissemination of uh, orientation program in in an university uh, to the uh, young students of university how we can promote the japanese education system and so on and right left below is the uh, mixed orientation program who has who are already uh, get the mid scholarship mixed scholarship and we inform them about the education system and cultural activities before coming to Japan. Then you see uh, the Ikebana. Actually, uh, the before establishing the job, uh, uh, first activities, Japanese cultural activities was done in Japan, uh, done in, in my country. And it is uh, under the forum named Asia, Asia Bunka Kaikan Dosokai, under a senior uh, job member, uh, um, the professor uh, Dr. Mojia Musen, who awarded the Order of the Rising Sun by the Japanese government. In the last five years, about 250 Bangladeshi residents have been trained on Ikebana flower arrangement. You see the right upper, the first. Uh, Ikebana certificate uh, distribution ceremony in presence of first ambassador uh, to Bangladesh. Uh, and then you see the, uh, the demonstration of Ikebana and finally some Ikebana flower arrangement by the Bangladeshi Ikebana student. And in Joab, Joab is established, started the Joab Japanese language school in 2002 with 20 students of preliminary level, presently equivalent to N5 level, by recruiting a native Japanese language teacher. By this time, the enrollment in January 2024, N5 level will become 250, N4 level 30, and N3 level about 10 students. Job was under Sakura network from 2009 to 2014. You see the upper right, upper right is the classroom of Job Japanese language school. And then lower left is the JLPT exam hall before starting the JLPT exam. And the uh, last, the representative from Japan Foundation, representative from Japan Embassy and JLPT exam committee of Job uh, with collected answer sheet in December 20, 2023 JLPT exam. You see that the job committee along with the Japanese Japan uh, representative from Japan Foundation and Japanese University, uh, Japanese Embassy in Bangladesh. JLPT exam. Joab conducted JLPT exam from uh, 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 conducted JLPT exam uh, and in, in December. Uh, when it started in 2003, it was uh, around about 250. But now we become the number, total number of examinees become 9,708. 
and other than we uh, conduct the speech contest in honor of International Mother Language Day, we have conduct Japanese speech, con speech contest for the Bangladeshi nationals and the Bengali speech contest for Japanese nationals. And this year, Japanese speech contest was held on 17th February and Bengali speech contest for the Japanese nations will be held in the occasion of Bengali New Year's Festival in April. You see the picture, the, the, a contestant is uh, delivering his Japanese speech and then we, we see the uh, prize ceremony of Bangladeshi singing contest, Bengali singing contest by the Japanese and also a dinner party with the Japanese speech contestant and the ambassador's residence. And in 2023, that means last year, Joab has established Joab Japanese Cultural Center, JJCC, with a grassroots grant from the Embassy of Japan. After establishing JJCC, we are doing the several activities. The origami, origami demonstration for general people, Japanese tea ceremony demonstration for the general people, and Bangladeshi traditional cake festival, handmade cake, and Japanese film show, Ikebana demonstration for the general people. And recently, beside this, we are planning to arrange the ongoing training program by the native Japanese language trainer for the Bangladeshi Japanese language teachers to increase their skill. Uh, among these activities, we also do some activities along with the Sabja as a member of Sabja. Uh, the, uh, the Sabja members, we do some uh, Japanese language speech contest, but due to co after uh, COVID pandemic, uh, pandemic we, this is not running. And, and so far, uh, we'll contact with the Joab, uh, Sabja president to do this again. And rather than uh, recently, uh, the, our government also taking an initiative to contact to contact with the job member, job EC members, how we can promote the uh, Japanese culture and uh, uh, mainly the Japanese uh, study program the, uh, to the uh, Murut level of uh, students. That means the uh, other universities who, which are situated uh, uh, far from the capital. So. Um, this way we are running our activities uh, and this is the uh, way we are doing and all uh, this is all thank you very much thank you very much uh, corset san so from australia we have jason san and from papua new guinea we have ombo san for comments um, starting with jason san please Some photos here. One photo uh, that stood out to me personally is uh, the one with the JLPT exam, where the um, the committee with Juab uh, of, of the Juab committee is uh, posing with the answer sheets for the December 2023 JLPT exam. Uh, so, as the JLPT person at my university, um, you know, I'm the Tantosha for that. And so just looking at this photo filled me with a sense of uh, mixed emotions, nostalgia, uh, <laughs> you know, all sorts of things that come, that nervousness that comes with the JLPT uh, <laughs> when you're on the side administering, you know, administering it. Um, it's it's a, a great photo, I think, that just uh, gives you that sense of, oh, we did it. <laughs> um, besides that, I'm just, uh, and this is a comment, um, and some of this may connect with uh, with what Lin Don San was saying earlier. Some of it may connect with uh, what Ashok San uh, also mentioned earlier. But Ikebana Mixed Orientation Program Education Seminar Japanese Language School. JLPT, Japanese speech contest, dinner party, singing contest, origami, tea ceremony, cake festival, 
if this were like a CV or, you know, a resume, I think you would get the job. Um, you are doing, Juab seems to be doing so, so much. And I imagine that that is being done with limited resources as, as we all have, but this is a lot to do, I think, with, with limited resources. And so just, I think what I want to say is kudos for doing so much of, so many of these things, so many things. Um, that was one feeling that I had um, and the, so, you know, oh my goodness, you're doing so much with limited resources. The second feeling that I had was, uh, oh my goodness, this is highly motivating. I wonder how much more we can do or how much, um, how much, I guess, more efficiently, um, you know, those of us who are fortunate to have more resources, um, you know, what we can do with those resources, uh, just looking at what you're doing. Uh, as an example, um, I would love to hear more about how um, the management, how the struct, the management structure allows you to accomplish this. How are you managing this? Also, two thousand people in the alumni association. Again, <laughs> how are you managing this? Um, this is all so wonderful. I think we. We're all looking at this presentation and, and uh, curious about what we can take from it to uh, to do better uh, on you know in our individual areas. Thank you. Fortunately, the Uida alumni, uh, uh, the number of alumni are doing voluntarily, so they are paying their own money. And on the other way, we are getting some money from our job, Japanese language school. So by this way, we are doing our activities. And usually we do in the holidays. And we have a good connection with the all members all over my country. So when we like education seminar, we contact with the university authority uh, remote from the Dhaka, that is my capital. And they arrange their uh, seminar hall and disseminate the information to the all students, mainly the uh, university students. So presently we are doing for the university students and we do it in this way. But we are planning, we go to the more uh, remote type, like the uh, technical school and technical institutes. And we are uh, contacting with our the government minister of manpower, how we, we can promote this one. We are trying to get the help from the government also. So doing this. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And now moving on to Ombosan for, for comments. Yes, uh, Dr. Alan is a very good uh, and a colorful you know, presentation. Yes, it's, it, it's really good, yeah. We are also just doing the same thing on the other side, on the 10 degree south of the equator. Mm. And uh, we were established uh, in uh, 1999, and I just uh, learned that you know you were established in uh, 2000. So we are just one year difference. But your membership is 2000, <laughs> whereas I only have 200 <laughs> minus one zero. Yeah, yeah. But all those you know, activities that you're doing, yes, we are doing the same, but at uh, different uh, stages, at uh, different uh, uh, levels. Yeah, uh, and. Uh, one very interesting thing that uh, um, that I saw in your activities is the Bangladeshi Speech Contest, yeah. which you host for the Japanese uh, nationals, nationals based yeah. in Dhaka or you know wherever up there, mm -hmm. and which is good because I'm also thinking about it. You know, I mean, PNG we have 850 languages, and that's the highest in the world. Yeah, and uh, but we have the lingua franca, uh, which is called a pidgin. Right, it's almost they call top piece in, huh? yeah. And so, yes, I think we should also, my school, we should also organize a speech contest for the Japanese nurses living in Port Moresby in our capital city. Yeah. I mean, likewise, probably in your respective uh, countries too. Have we ever thought about that? Yeah? Giving a speech contest to the to, in Spanish uh, living in uh, in Argentina and things like that. Of course, you know, our students, our, our kids, our children will have a speech contest for the Japanese, 
And likewise, you know, like what he's doing, we should also do the same thing in our own countries. See how fluent other, you know, Japanese speakers can speak our language as well too. It's a very good, you know, I mean, giving culture, not only giving, 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 but accepting as well too, you know, it's a two-way thing, yeah? Uh, and that's very, very good. And uh, also added on to this, you know, I mean, uh, remember, we volunteers, uh, I mean, we uh, alumni association members, wherever we are, in which country, you know, I mean, we have our own alumni association members and uh, we are doing this from our own heart, right? Uh, we're not getting paid for it. We're using our own free time and effort to do this. All because of, should we call it uh, Shogo Shugi? Uh, uh, what's the English equivalent? You know, you, you give me, uh, I give you. Reciprocity. Reciprocity. Yeah, reciprocity. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Yes, it's a win-win case. Huh? Yeah. So that's what we should do. Just because of this reciprocity, you know, what we got from Japan, we want to give it back to Japan. That's for, for this idea, for this mentality that we have in the head, we give our own free time and effort. And this is where we're making our respective volunteer associations more active. Huh? That's what we're doing. So we should all be, you know, feeling proud of our own associations in our respective countries. And, you know, thank you for, you know, what you're doing up there with you up. And so maybe later on, I think we're going to do some more talking. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, actually, uh, so many volunteer, Japanese volunteer organizations in my country, so they have to communicate with the general people. So Japanese learn uh, Bangla language. That's why we are arranging the uh, 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 Bengali speech contest for the Japanese nations. It's a charm. It's an enjoyment. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Koishe uh, san, Jason san. Thank you very much, Koishe Hongo and Ombo san. Next presentation is by Luisa from Mexico. Next generation leadership development and generational changes. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> My name is Luisa, and I am the current secretary of the Mexican Association of Former Scholars from Japan. Today, I'm going to share why AMEG is a good example of how to train the next generation leaders towards generational change in alumni associations. So currently, AMEG has around 600 members, and it was created in 1994. So this year, we are celebrating its 30th anniversary. Due to its efforts to deepen the relation between Mexico and Japan, AMEG has been honored with the ambassadors and foreign ministers like uh, recognitions from the government of Japan. And going back to our topic, like as you can see in the structure of our organization, like we have many young people. Also, we have six different regional coordinations in different areas of Mexico, as you can see in the previous map, like for example, north, northeast, northwest, southeast. Also, our organization has six different coordinations in different fields of studies like arts and humanities, architecture, education, or business. So this diversity and integration has helped a lot. It's like change for like integrating new generations. Also, AMEC has done like many efforts to make the best use of two things, of the experience of our seniors, but also all the will 
and the motivation of our young members. And I will try to explain you why we have done this. Like since 2012, the organization is made, I mean, it's formed by different generations, but especially the main board has been formed by people between their 20s and 40s. So for our big events, usually, the young people are in charge of the main organization, like the coordination, and our seniors are our advisors. Also, like many of our events, take place in different cities, in different regions, like each year. And the reason of doing this is not just because we want a diverse audience and also to have a larger impact, but we also want to boost new leaderships in different regions of Mexico. We don't want all our leaders just to be in the capital city. So this is the other reason. And we also promote diversity and gender equality. So it is very important to notice that to delegate responsibilities to the new generations is a risk worth taking, definitely, for our alumni, association, alumni associations. We also try to follow up on our new and former students. So we have like an electronic directory and we also try to have like a data management strategies to have like a better organization of their information and also of the statistics using very simple tools from Google Drive, like forms or charts. So it's nothing, it's not rock and science, just to make like, to access the information in an easier way. In the case of our new students, when, before they go to Japan, we ask them to, like, to give us their information to register. And we also ask them to give us a contact in Mexico. And before they go to Japan, we recommend them to join the circle of Mexican students in Japan, which is called Nichibokubashi. And we also recommend them to join the Mex Students Association, MSA, in Japan. And once they are done with their studies, we ask them to do a presentation in Mexico, if they are there or online, if they are somewhere else, to share about their experience. But we also use it to make them update their information. So we don't like, we are not losing the track of our students, which tends to, I mean, it's very easy to happen in our alumni associations. And it doesn't matter if they are, if they come back to Mexico or if they stay in Japan or, or they are living anywhere in the world, we ask them to join either our activities or to be part of our like organization of the board of it. And Talking about our former students, we make use of, of some important events. Like recently we had the celebration for the foreign minister commencement. And so we use this event to try to contact former students by mail first, then by SNS, or also by phone calls, like through other members of their same generation. And we, I'm going to just give an example of some events that we think they have been useful, not just to help AMEG to integrate different generations within the organization, but also to integrate us with the Nikkei community in Mexico, for example, or with other Mexicans who are also interested in Japanese culture it doesn't matter if they are not related to the embassy or to the organization. For example, the Day of Japan in Mexico. And also we have an important networking event each year that brings together associations, universities, companies that are involved in the bilateral relation. And after seven years of efforts of this event, plus of course, the efforts of the different 
stakeholders and participate in this event and efforts of MOFA. Now there is the, one of the results is the, a declaration that is called like the Big Nikkei Community in Mexico to promote the Japanese culture. And these activities that I mentioned are mainly le like they were they are led by Ahmed, like Ahmed is taking like the main leadership. But we also have other events in which we join the organization with other stakeholders important for the bilateral relations. So one of these is the Latin American Forum for former scholars of Japan. And in this one, like we do it with the participation of many other organizations in Latin America and also with the help of MOFA. But AMEC led the way, like hosting the first event and then it was followed by Colombia and now we are waiting, maybe Brazil or Argentina are gonna be the next, let's see, we don't know. And we also have a forum of like the next generation leaders of Mexico and Japan. And this we do it with the Japan Foundation and also with the, the Chamber of Commerce and Industry of Japan. So I hope in, with this presentation, I managed first to share some useful strategies, but also to raise awareness of how important it is for alumni associations to be prepared for the generational change in order for our associations to first be like actualized, right? Like, but also to have continuity. So thank you very much. That is everything. Hi, Luisa, Luisa, thank you very much. Marista from Colombia to make the response. Thank you very much. Uh, Luisa, you had a very, very nice presentation. Uh, I have to say here, uh, Ahmed is our senpai. You know, in these processes, uh, you have a very robust organization, very structured organization. It's what we have to, we want to have uh, in Colombia and, and in most of the countries in the region. Uh, and as per what you're saying, uh, you're doing the, the homework very well to have this uh, generational uh, change implemented in, in your organization. And it's, a, it's truth. Uh, it's true. We need to have this uh, strategy implemented. Um, I have to say, um, it's not only, it's not only the fact of uh, making a, a, a transfer of know-how. It's also, I'm going to be 60 next year, so you mentioned 20s and 40s. Well, I am the third level, 60s. And uh, it's, not, it's not only transfer of knowledge or know-how, but also giving them space to do the things like they know how to do it. Because we have to adopt their communication ways. We have to adopt the dynamics of their movements and, and their interests that are very different. The, the world is changing and, and if, we, if we expect them to do the same things we're doing, then we think we are calm that. We have to give them the space to, to I mean, uh, to do the things like they want to do and they, and they are used to do. So um, uh, we will follow your 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 strategy to continue doing the the generational the generational change in in, in Colombia and uh, we will also do what is in our hands to uh, tell the other organizations in the region and continue with the work in the region as you are doing actually I have to say we did wow in, in Colombia only because you did wow in Mexico and we learned that and, and we're doing that now and that's a very good pra practice but what's learned from you and i have to recognize that the, most of our activities are learned from mexico so i appreciate it thank you very much thank you for your comments
はい、えー、それでは、えー、質疑応答に移りたいと思います。Well, like like、States, uh, 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 はい。Connect the old timers <coughs> with the new ones for mentoring and、um, supporting them as they go to Japan while they're in Japan and when they come back.、Um, but I do think that in different regions,、um, uh, having one's own、um, social media group, you know, Facebook or WhatsApp,、uh, would make a lot of sense to, to connect people. And,、um, you know, if somebody were in the Washington, D.C. area, for example, having a A social media group just for us would make a lot of sense. For a website, I think we'd need an association, you know, with an organizational structure and money, and、uh, there's been no conversation about that yet. The second question to John San. Is it something not related to the, to the objectives of the cultural diplomacy between the US and Japan? Our association in Mexico h a v e、uh, some former scholars registra- registered、uh, with an address in the US. Probably it would be convenient to them to be connected with、uh, those groups and or association. Yes, I, I think actually we would welcome any resident. In the United States, who has been a MEX scholar, no matter what their country of origin is. In fact, at the dinner I attended、um, in February of last year at the ambassador's residence, one of the uh, people um, he grew up in Russia, came to Japan on a MEX scholarship, and then ended up、uh, working for、uh, maybe studying in the United States and then working for a company in the Washington, D.C. area. And so to me, that was very interesting. I, I think. Most Americans would welcome that kind of networking. So please,、uh, somebody from Mexico living in the United States, if you can find us on LinkedIn,、uh, join the group. And、uh, I, maybe we can learn a lot from people who have experience in AME to, to help us develop our network. Thank you, Linda and John. Any other questions from the people on site? Yes, please. This is for Luisa. Do you want to make a run for it? <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just start before you get to your seat. Luisa,、um, your, your communication coordination team must be quite impressive. Website, Facebook, Instagram, the site formerly known as Twitter, YouTube, email, <laughs> LinkedIn. <laughs> Did you leave some out?、Um, it is incredible. How, how is your、uh, communication coordination team managing to cover all of these?、Um, you know, Sites and social media, and there would also seem to be、uh, some sort of cost structure involved with this, right? Because it's not free to host a website, even though you may be able to get someone to make it for free.、Um, usually, somewhere along the line, something costs money.、Um, I would just love to hear a little bit more about. Um, how you're managing all of these、um, different 
uh, sites, apps, et cetera, and, and how much you guys are cross posting versus creating original content versus whatever else you're doing um, to get people engaged. Okay, I think they are amazing because they are basically two people, Andre and Alan. So they are like very good and very efficient. And maybe, I mean, sometimes they get some help, but they are mainly the ones in charge. I think, I mean, Alan, for example, he does the content for TikTok and he does original contact, content. <laughs> At TikTok, it was not there. It's popular, TikTok. <laughs> and also WhatsApp. <laughs> yeah. Uh, WhatsApp is missing. Oh, WhatsApp is missing. <laughs> <laughs> and, but, like, we also help, like, for example, if there's going to be a post, like, either, like, the president or me or someone, like, kind of write something, you know, so... You, you help them in that way. But sometimes they do everything, but so I think they are very efficient, but they actually do it. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> because, um, like you, I, I feel like you will have some good statistics because you're using all of these, but do you find that some of these offer or uh, lead to more engagement than others? In other words, to simplify, simplify my question, which of these do you find to be the most uh, popular? Okay. It depends like the, gen like the generation, actually talking about generations. So that's why there are so many. For young people, and that's why Alan, who is the youngest, helped us there with TikTok, because none of us, we, we don't have TikTok. Like people in our forties, we don't use TikTok, but younger ones do. Also in Facebook, but we also have like a private group in Facebook where, so members can get like easy information, but that is just for members. And we also have like an open page for everyone to check. And WhatsApp, we have, two groups, one we call it like the social AMEG, where everyone can interact. We also give announcements, but, but everyone can just write. And we have other one, which is called official AMEG, where just the board writes like clear messages. Because what sometimes happens is because of the interaction of the members, the main message is gone. And they don't get the information. So that's why we had the need to create, to, like, to create both. So in the official one, whoever doesn't want to be like talking about random stuff, they can just go there and check like what they need to know every day or every week or who, I mean, whenever we are posting something important. And I mean, Instagram is also a popular SNS in, in Mexico. So I think that that's why there are so many. We are trying to reach like the different generations. Email, we use it, but again, mainly for probably older people, right? Who are like more comfortable using that tool. And yeah, we have faced like these uh, challenges because even some of our like older members <laughs> At some point, they feel of they, like they were feeling offended because they were not receiving a letter or things like that, right? Like our emails were not like formally enough, for example. So we have to. We always are living with these like generational, like different perspectives, and, and trying to solve them. Okay. I hope I answered the question. Uh, you did. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I, I, um, Merdan Santos. Merdan San, please. Thank you, Luisa, for your presentation. I just wanted to ask, uh, I have one question. So, in your organizational structure, you have a treasurer. That means, like, you are a, a 
<laughs> you were having like uh, some capital or you were having like I, I mean like I just want to know like the source like where it comes from <laughs> do you uh, get the donation or there is like some uh, regular like uh, funding coming mm -hmm. from somewhere and I, I think for God and Jason also asked something about the money right okay I mean sometimes we get some budget from the Japanese embassy but we also, I mean, our members pay like a fee every year. It's not much. That has also been like a discussion in the different boards because some of us think that we have to increase the fee. Others think we have to increase the amount of members so we have more money. But anyway, yeah, it's like, it's actually very little like probably $10 a year per person. But sometimes we also have very generous members and they just give a lot more because they have the budget and they want to share it. As, as you said, also, I think one characteristic of our members is that we are very thankful towards the Japanese government and also towards the embassy in Mexico and the organization because it gives us different opportunities to interact and to have nice experiences. So yeah, many members give more money for that fee. So that also helps. But besides that, no, it, we don't have any other source of income. But yeah, I mean, the treasurer is to take care of that money. And also because sometimes we hold events, right? Like, and everyone has to pay like a certain fee. So yeah we have to manage like how that money is organized and so so that is our reason but we, it's not a, it's not that we have a huge income but we have some hi Mesh, i have a question for john personally i have a linkedin account but Maybe I don't know about this enough, but LinkedIn, I just want to know the source of income for Facebook group because many countries may use Facebook groups, but technical or social benefit. Well, my question is whether it is better to use LinkedIn for social or other purposes. My question is, why did you pick LinkedIn as your communication channel? LinkedIn has an image of networks among professionals. Facebook, on the other hand, is for other types of groups in the society for socialization. Recruiters use LinkedIn as well and skills and referrals of your acquaintances. These are interesting functions of LinkedIn. If you look at additional functions of LinkedIn, I thought that this can be a good channel to help expand the network of among professionals to mutually help each other providing support but going back to your question linkedin is an account for the entire us but there are other regional events at different localities. And there are people who can attend those local events. And there are people who find convenience in using social network. Say, for example, in sharing pictures taken at an event. Ashok-san, please. 
to uh, Luisa. I think it's a wonderful presentation, and especially the next generation question. And I think I just wanted your practical experience on it, because I find that the younger people, especially in the age group of 30 and 40, are so much concerned about the professional growth wherever they are working that they are kind of not willing to take on anything extra because their promotion is due, somebody has to pre present a paper, somebody has to attend a conference. So the people who are worth working are already too much overburdened in their own professional organization. Is that uh, a problem for you? I think, I mean, it could be, but not always. Like, for example, in the current board, like, I mean, majority of us are all the four of us, like the president, the vice president, the, in, I am the secretary and the treasurer, we all have extremely busy jobs. Yes. And I mean, I have my own, own company, but the rest, like they work for a company and a very demanding company. But I also think, I mean, this is something that Christian was also saying that being part of AMEG and also of AMEG's board is yeah, you do it out of uh, thankfulness, but it also gives some status, I think, or some like, position or yeah, recognition, exactly. So I think there are, I mean, there are young persons who are interested in joining. But in order to do this and to make it attractive for people and to make it manageable, we as an organization, we have to make some efforts, like we understand that they are doing this by heart and we are not paying them, right? So we cannot also be super strict. So we understand that if there is an event, sometimes the president cannot go, then it has to be the vice president. And if the vice president cannot go, then it's me or so we are always we don't say like it has to be this person. So there is always like a, an option of an open option of who can go this here, who can go there. And also like Japanese influence in Mexico is growing and growing and it's having presence in different areas. So now we have events, not just organized by us, but by other organizations in literally all regions of Mexico. And sometimes there is no person from the board there. So we also ask sometimes like in the group, WhatsApp group, like we have an event in this area, like is there someone who is willing and has time to represent a Mac, for example, and people help and they go. So we, we try to make it easy or easier for them. So, I mean, they, we need to have a commitment also because if you say yes, you, you, you need to have some responsibility. But we understand that it's just one of many other tasks they have. So we just try not to overdo it. So I think that is a good strategy for people to accept to join, even of course they are very busy with their jobs. And also I think many young people join because they are also interested in for example, sharing information about the, their area of expertise, right? So we have many events on like science and technology or data management and how this impacts the Japanese-Mexican relation. Like, so they are interested in participating, organizing this kind of stuff and also probably giving the talk. So. I think that is all reason, like the topics we, I mean, of the events are also interesting for young people. Okay, thank you. Thank you, yes. Hi, thank you.
Let's move on to the next presentation by Canada and by Papua New Guinea. Brazil and Turkmenistan will respond to each presentation. First, the floor goes to Natalia from Canada. And the theme is Japanese Scholarship Alumni Association Quebec Atlanta and the current issues as well as uh, the current status and issues. So thank you very much. I think uh, some people may have jet lag and it may be tough a time, but um, let's try to stay awake. And I am Natalia Pekal and I come from Canada and I studied at Tokyo Gakugei University. And thank you very much for giving me this opportunity on the occasion of the Fourth Japan Alumni Conference. Thank you for inviting me. So I believe people who had um, experience studying here in Japan are friends of Japan for their whole lifetime. And I'm very happy and proud that I am um, one of such persons. So now I would like to talk about the Japanese Scholarship Alumni Association in Quebec, Atlanta. I would like to talk about the current status and some of the challenges that we are facing. Oops. Um, so, the association in Quebec and Atlanta was established in 2014, and it's one of the four uh, alumni associations in Canada. So I have a circle here on the Canadian map. Um, Quebec is in the east, and we have four other um, Atlantic provinces. Right now, the membership is 70. And our challenge is to increase the number of members. And I've already um, had a lot of uh, ideas after listening to all your presentations, and we have a executive committee within the organization for the management of our association and also in order to carry out events um, in the future. To communicate information, we are using email and also we have a Facebook page. We have a private group page on Facebook. And we are thinking of using social media um, even more. And our activities, um, there are two major activities that we carry out. One is uh, related to Japan, uh, or rather um, taking part in events related to Japan. Montreal uh, is rich in culture and always around the year there's some sort of festival or event being held so if it is an event related to japan then we will try to uh, represent the alumni association and be present there one example is there is an event called matsuri japan um, which is held once every year. And during this festival, uh, which is organized by the Japanese uh, community uh, and people who are interested in Japanese culture, who want to uh, study Japanese, who like the Japanese taiko drums, um, these people will gather for this event. And we also have a very small corner as the Alumni Association so that we can make some PR about the scholarship, next scholarship program. 
And we are, have another event called Otaku Homong um, for animation and manga. Um, the geeks who like these things um, gather together for a festival. And it, if you go there, it's it makes you feel like um, you are standing in the middle of Harajuku in Tokyo. Maybe you might have similar events um, in your countries, but even if, uh, or rather, uh, the animation and manga was the trigger point for studying Japanese. There are many people like that. So, like the Otaku Festival, um, I think having a representative of, of the Alumni Association taking part is very important. And at the Consulate General um, in Montreal, uh, their support is very important and um, they offer us with a very important platform to make PR. So I'd like to take this opportunity uh, to thank uh, the Japanese Consulate General in Montreal for uh, your support. Our, in our cooperation, collaboration with the Consulate General, um, there had been many different events, um, orientation at universities, where we talk to the university students and have an information session. And from the Consulate General, um, there will be a person uh, to explain about the guidelines, but also from our side, from the alumni, um, we also talk about our experience studying in Japan and also answer questions from the students. And uh, the atmosphere is quite different. They will ask things about what's not in the guidelines and we can answer from our experiences. And we also have a Japanese speech contest uh, we also sometimes take part and if there is a candidate um, to go to Japan, then we will have some orientation sessions. Uh, the Consulate General will invite us and uh, it makes us envy that candidate who is ready to go to Japan. But we will talk about what troubles we had um, so to make sure that the new student will not uh, make the same mistake that others have. But it's a very fun meeting for us. And also, when uh, the students come back from Japan, uh, we will have a meeting uh, for exchange. Now, some of, of course, we have made achievements, but there are still things we can do better, and we will have to come up with solutions against the issues and challenges that we have. I think the situation is the same in many of your countries as well uh, because of COVID. Our daily life almost was at a standstill, especially in Canada. There were many restrictions placed on citizens. So almost all activities stopped. Um, even today, um, it hasn't gone back to the pre-COVID pace. It's very difficult. But f since last year, we are starting to prepare to get back where we were. One thing is we um, carried out a questionnaire survey where we included questions such as, and, and this is for our members, uh, we asked about uh, what kind of activities or events would you like the Alumni Association to carry out? Would you like to become a member of the Executive Committee? What kind of contributions can you make? Uh, so we asked these questions and we are now receiving the answers and so based on um, the response, uh, we are going to build up our policy and strategies going forward. Now, maybe this is 
because it's Quebec, uh, but there's a lot of people uh, moving. Uh, the young people will be moving from one province to another um, because of job change, or they may be located, um, relocated to another country. So we have to update our membership list. So there are 70 members, um, as I said at the beginning, but the active members actually uh, is not 70. So uh, we have to update the member list to grasp um, where the alumni are living, but we are still struggling on the best way to do this. And lastly, uh, we have carried out a lot of activities, but we want to make our association more interesting and more fun. So um, there was a comment earlier, but we want to involve more young and enthusiastic members uh, to contribute. So in the executive committee, uh, since last year, uh, we do have people who willingly volunteer their time and passion. But we are hoping that we can recruit more young people like this. And also uh, diversifying our events. Uh, we want to come up with new types of events. But looking at our member list, there are people in very interesting jobs. Maybe uh, one new idea, uh, maybe uh, for example, if there is an architect among the um, members or if there is a importer of Japanese sake into Canada, maybe have them present um, in front of an audience, that will probably, uh, pr probably be a win-win situation because for our association, we can spread the field of our activity and for these presenters, they may be able to um, expand and strengthen their presence and visibility. And also, uh, we will continue our collaboration and cooperation with the Consulate General in Montreal. Um, so, thank you. Thank you very much. So, we have heard from Natalia-san uh, from Brazil. Paula-san, please, comments. It was very interesting to see that uh, from uh, the pre-candidates to the, the post-graduation, uh, you are uh, always trying to approach youth. So you have events with youth culture and otaku and so on, and uh, you are trying to insert in the board. Just uh, I, I think that in the same manner as the Ambeg is is practicing. So uh, I think that this is going to be a very good hint for our association in Brazil. Uh, also, I found it very inter interesting to learn that the consulate, in your case, uh, invites the, the people who has just, uh, who, who were approved for the scholarship so that before they leave uh, Canada, you get to know uh, yourself. So this is kind of, uh, you're planting the, the seed for a, a, a future relation. So this is very important and this is strategic as well. I was wondering after um, uh, Luisa said that um, they, uh, the alumni, they pay a tax to participate and so on and even though they have to pay a tax they are they still show up right this is amazing for me <laughs> so maybe this uh as we have been uh talking about people to people relations so uh if before they uh, start their courses in Japan, uh, the relationship is already established, then you have more probability of having alumni active 
after uh, they finish. So this is very important, is this a, and this is a very good hint uh, for us. So thank you very much. Uh, yes, uh, Paula, I totally agree with you because, uh, like I mentioned, this pre especially these uh, pre-departure sessions, they are very exciting because the candidate is already happy, relaxed. He is about to leave in, in a couple of weeks. And we as a uh, senpai, we are happy for that person. And we can give really uh, good advice because uh, we went through this. For example, looking for an apartment, uh, things to do in Japan, not to do in Japan, um, manners, uh, culture, a lot of different things. Uh, um, they have official guidelines uh, from uh, from uh, the Ministry uh, of uh, Foreign Affairs. They are very detailed. They are uh, perfectly uh, compiled. Uh, there's uh, a lot of information. So uh, we uh, kind of add to it from our own experience. So usually these sessions are uh, are really good and uh, the consulate provides the, uh, the the room for that the meeting they organize that they invite us and we always uh, attend this with pleasure thank so, you thank uh, you for the comment i i think that this might be a very good practice to suggest for all the consulates uh, to do this because uh, you also make the, the new exchange students feel more comfortable knowing that they have the backup uh, when they finish the course because uh, they uh, usually when you're arriving to the end of your your scholarship then you wonder what's going to happen in in the market so just knowing that you have a, a backup of senpai who are already established somehow in the market uh, makes you feel uh, protected so it's very important for everybody yes but uh, also this is uh, a lot thanks to the efforts of the consulate. Uh, we are really uh, fortunate uh, to have uh, a great people at our uh, Japanese consulate in Montreal. They are very passionate. They, uh, we, we have very good collaboration with them, very good contact. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, This is going to be the very last presentation before the break by Ombo from Papua New Guinea on the promotion of people's interest in studying in Japan through the education of Japanese language. Ombo san, please. Please turn on the microphone. The fourth Japan Alumni Convention Thank you very much for your invitation to this conference. I'm from Papua New Guinea. I am a general regional officer of the Alumni Association. Before that, I also served as a chairperson. In Papua New Guinea, there was not an Alumni Association. I see you in Mitaka. I studied for five years. J A R A. J stands for Japan. R for Ryugakse. A for Association. And the acronym is J A R A. Japan Ryugakse Association is the name of the organization that I lead. And it was established in April 1999, 21st day of April. It currently has a member of around 200 across the country. 
and we operate in the capital city and there are some about a dozen JARA members within the capital city and this is the very last presentation before the break so please bear with me in my presentation I would like to introduce the activities of JARA and the challenges faced by JARA. I would also like to conclude by touching upon the challenges faced by the contact point of incumbent and former Ryugakusei students. Now, JARA's activity. First, well, you can read through all those bullets. We first need to develop and update the database of JARA members and monitoring. Second is the networking opportunities for the members. And in my country, it is very mountainous. So it has not dokinas. And you also have to pay some fees for networking purposes. We do pay some fees and we will look into these issues. Yeah, everyone talk about networking, but there are areas that is not impossible. And the thirdly, JARA conference and General Assembly and for coordination with the Japanese Embassy and MEXT and five to disseminate Japanese language and culture to people in Papua New Guinea as Bangladeshi fellow alumni has been discussing. So we do cover all these areas of activities. So five are the main areas of our activities. Also, we provide assistance to the researchers collecting the remains of Boma Japanese soldiers during the World War II. There has been a clash between Japan and the Allied forces, and many Japanese soldiers died. And our members, JARA members, provide assistance as a guide and as an assistant to the delegations coming to New pa uh, Papua New Guinea to collect the remains of the f Japanese soldiers. And point eight, networking with JICA alumni. We provide opportunities to network with JICA alumni. In addition, 1.9, with the governmental organizations, development partners, NGOs, businesses, and laypersons. We also provide impetus to promote networking with these organizations and entities to revitalize our activity. And we also network with the Alumni Association of Universities in the Pacific. There are 14 Pacific Island countries, including Solomon and others. And we communicate with alumni of these country students who studied in Japan. We, first, we further have to deepen our networking activities of our fellow alumni in other Pacific countries. One point eleven and 12 
Donation drive to sustain JARA activities. We need to raise funds for our activity. We set the directions of JARA's activities. We also have to secure funds needed for the fuel of the transportation. We do run the donation drive, but it really depends on the size of one's heart and budget as to how much money individuals may pay out. So the situation may differ from one association to another. Next, these are the snapshots of our activity. Left top is a picture taken exchanging, interacting with other uh, former JICA volunteers taken at the end of last year. Former ex JICA volunteers, not the MEX alumni, but with JICA alumni, volunteers, and ourselves at a joint event. Because some of the JICA volunteer alumni also join our events as well. So the similar thing may be happening in Latin America as well. Left bottom is a picture taken last year. No, I'm sorry, last month it was. We had an event for an event coming back to PNG. And I was having a debriefing session with the student who have just returned. He lived in Japan for 15 years and came back to Papua New Guinea. And to us, he is a foreigner, having lived in Japan for many years. However, he will no longer qualify as a gaijin after a briefing session, updating information. This is my kohai, even though he looks older than I am. On the right, was a picture taken two months ago from December 21st to the 1st of January, no, January 21st to February 1st. This is a picture including myself and right bottom is the interpreter of JARA. Other Japanese persons are Japanese ground self-defense force personnel who stayed in Solomon for two weeks. And we flew to Solomon with a two hour flight and provided translation service. PNG and Solomon weapons and ammunition during the wartime, trucks, tanks, and trucks and aircrafts, they are still exist in our countries. And this was a team that visited Solomon Islands to carry out a workshop on these wartime remnants. And these personnel have returned to Japan. 
There are other activities, such as a team collecting the remains of Japanese soldiers. Our seminar was also held last month from January 27th to 8th. There was a delegation of about 50 business persons visiting PNG to look for business opportunities. On that occasion, JARA members met them, PNG Investment Promotion Authority, and we worked together to promote the business communications to ensure the smooth organization of the event and the discussion that ensued. Next slide. This. So I have touched upon JARA's activities and level of activities may vary depending on the areas. There are certain sub areas of activities with different issues and challenges. At JARA, we are facing several issues. These are the areas of issues. Different countries may have different sets of issues. However, there are certain functions that lacks within JERA, starting with communication which is the biggest issue as we face. So we have to work, keep working on the improvement of communication, followed by conference organization. Meetings are very important. We have several times of general assemblies of JERA, There are other thematic meetings led by different executives. And within JERA, there are several overall meetings, plenary meetings at JERA. A meeting among 10 persons. However, there may be some requirement a minimum number of participants and going to the third issue of ownership and membership contributions and budgetary support from png government as well in addition to the support from the japanese embassy internet service as i have been discussing in office space is just as important. In promoting our activities, we are pursuing our activities through Japanese embassy. But sometimes we carry out some of the activities with an available space of someone's company and reciprocity. Reciprocity is something that is very important. And lastly, contact point for students going to Japan. And we accommodation, their language barrier, education of children, and discrimination 
handwriting, or penmanship. Hiragana and katakana are simple, but kanji is very difficult. There are different ways to read the same kanji. And lastly, in order to help overcome these challenges, we need to provide relevant support for students going to Japan to study in Japan. This needs to be corrected because the last sentence is grammatically wrong. So we required is the assistance. And we are also expecting support. So most of people do not have the answer to this request immediately. But with this, I would like to cl close my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Comments from Milda? Thank you very much for your uh, interesting presentation. I'm really fascinated, like how many activities you are doing at the same time. <laughs> do, uh, do you, uh, since you have incorporated your organization, right? So it has a legal base, is it? Yes, uh, April 21st, 1999, yes, it's uh, registered. Okay, yeah. and you have active members and uh, uh, there is a membership fee I uh, just wanted to know, like, who is who, who, who is the like paying the membership fee, and uh, regarding the budget support, uh, who are you targeting for the budget support? Uh, yes, uh, thank you for your question. I think uh, this is a question uh, that can go to Luis or you know. <laughs> Sorry, I meant here because I hear about you mentioning that. Huh? Yeah, I mean that goes for all of us. Huh? That goes for all of us. Yes, we do. We do. Yes, uh, expect our members to pay a portion eh, as a membership uh, annual membership fee. Uh, Yes, we, we, we charge them, you know, depending on our change rates and the value of our currencies, you know, a certain fee doesn't have to be that expensive or doesn't have to be that less. But yes, we do charge them. And uh, yes, some of us pay, some of us do not pay. They are reluctant. Mm. <laughs> I pay because I'm, I'm an I'm a active member of the association. But if I am not, am I living out in one of the provinces? Do you think I should be paying? Now we can laugh. <laughs> yes. And uh, the second part? Okay, the second part, I'll just change it a little bit. So by paying the membership fee, I mean, what is the benefit like for those who pay? I mean, what is the take? Oh, oh yes, uh, we, 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 we do have uh, we do have uh, limits, you know, like, you know, those who pay membership. Yes, we do, you know, uh, let them have access to like, you know, uh, meetings. Uh, if there is a request from the from the embassy or from uh, Japanese uh, business uh, houses for, you know, request for, you know, uh, this and that type of uh, help, uh, we do give priority. Yes, we do that. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Thank you very much. You're welcome. はい、大野さん、そしてメルダンさん、ありがとうございます。Ombo, Meldan, thank you very much. This session has got extended. The regional sessions are awaiting, so we are meeting the Q&A section. Thank you very much for your contribution. This is translation service. For those of you tuning in online, there are some announcements. The fourth alumni conference, day one, is now closed. We will be meeting again from 10 to 11.30 tomorrow 
Japan time. To recap the entire session, that session will be distributed online. So please come back again tomorrow morning, JST. Please do join us online again on day two, starting from 10 a.m. We'll have a 10 minute break. And this is the end of translation service.